Hello, hi, this is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day, night in the Lord. Wherever you are, go ahead and press tag and share. I have a lot of information. This is going to be more of a teaching video. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. I stated last night in my, um, or was it night before last, actually, when I was talking about XXX, the, guy, the young guy that got killed in Florida. I don't want to mess up his name, um, but y'all know who I'm talking about. So this is going to be a very, very, I'm going to try not to make it be long, but I want to talk about Satan's gift of music, the music industry, including gospel, the dark side, and how it all begins. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So this is not going to be no hooping and hollering video. I'm here to teach you. Praise God, praise God. So the first thing, I have a lot of information that I want to share, okay? And um, I want you to know, some of you already know, but I'm going to actually break it down more so. Praise God, praise God. All right, so first we're going to talk about Satan's counterfeit music. Now, if anybody don't know, some people do, some babes in Christ don't know. Lucifer was Heaven's music director. Um, he was originally Heaven music director. He was the choir leader. He was anointed cherub and given the ministry of music of the guarding cherub of the throne of God. So notice, he was over all the music. A lot of people don't understand what's going on today. What's going on today is music is being actually used as a medium against the children of God, against people, to actually lead the masses into murder, killing, stealing, robbing, raping. This is not good because Satan's gift was never taken away from him, but it was turned perverted when he actually got kicked out of heaven. So I have a lot of information. I hope it doesn't bore you, but I have a lot written down, a lot of things. Okay. So when he fell, God did not devise him of his wisdom or music ability. Of ministry meaning God didn't take it away all right it is solemn thought to reflect upon the fact that sin listen and discord enter the universe through a rebellious archangel a song leader and a musician so Satan is actually a musician as well understand all right since this fall Satan has used the power of music to divert worship from the true God to himself do you understand what's happening and even in the gospel arena you you know it's true they sound good, but yet uh, my grandmother used to say something, and I'm going to share it with you. If it hits your feet before it hits your heart, it's not gospel. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Gospel music is supposed to be talked about the gospel, not just to make you move. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So let me continue. Praise God, praise God. All right. So one of the most powerful expressions of worship is through music. Thus, music may be corrupted by the evil use of it. The evil uses of music. Okay, let's talk. We're going to first start in Genesis 4.21. It's the first specific mention of music instruments in the Bible. They were used in the ungodly line of Cain. Notice, hallelujah. This line consists of murderers and polygamists. Undoubtedly, the use of music would not be of a godly character. Also, in Exodus, Exodus 32.17.19, Israel, after their deliverance from Egypt, soon lapsed back into idolatry. Aaron set up a golden calf made out of the earrings of the people. The people gathered together for great festivity. The festivities caused the people to sing, shout, and dance themselves naked. So think about it. This is the type of music that, and y'all don't start with me about people, but Beyonce. All this negative music is supposed to divert you to do something negative. To Notice this music. Now, this was back in Aaron time. So it wasn't just about the chords and the strings and the harmonies and the frequencies. It was about the type. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. The festivities, I'm going to read that again, caused the people to sing, shout, and dance themselves naked. The satanic use of music is evident here. The music must have been lewd and bolsterous to make the people strip themselves naked, throwing off all proper restraint. So this is what we're talking about, the gates, the eyes, the ears, all your gates. Don't you understand that whatever you listen to, whatever you feed into your spirit, that's who you are. Come on, somebody. That's why some music are sexual. Rock music, we're going to get into that too. So this is gonna, might be a three to four part video. This is part one. So let me stay on course here. There was a difference in the holy dancing of Miriam and the woman in Exodus 20 in the sensual dancing before the golden calf. So when they're dancing their body parts, it's to entice you. Men go to strip clubs. Why do you think they go to strip clubs? They get enticed and sensual. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let me continue. Job 21, 7, 12. Job lamented over the way the wicked dance using the timbre, 
harp, and organ in their musical activities. The era of modern dancing has been associated with much wickedness. Psalm 69, 12. David was mocked in the song of the drunkards. The singing that generally comes from drinking bouts is coarse and vile, certainly not glorifying to God. Isaiah 23, 15, 16. In Bible times, harlots would play harps and guitars to attract men to themselves. One can imagine the sensuous type of song music that would be played to seduce men to evil. So a lot of the music that's being played today is actually trying to induce people to evil. You guys, why do you think that the kids, the young kids, it started when Grand Theft Auto, remember when Grand Auto Theft came out, the video games, where well, they started with the video games, kill, 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 blood, 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 disobey your parents, disobey this, we don't want to go to school anymore. If you really understand what has happened here, that's been a trend. Now they're making music to still entice these kids. These kids, if they don't have a godly family, if they're not rooted into God, then what they're putting in their in their ear comes out in their spirit and then comes out in their behavior. It goes into their spirit and come out in their behavior. Why do you think there's been so many drive-bys? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So many of them getting on here talking about, if you look at it, they're talking about big booties, money, and killing. That's just what the enemy wants to do in these last days. It is a spirit of rebellion. Come on, somebody, and lawlessness, God says. Let me continue. Isaiah 23, 15 says, um, no, I'm sorry, Amos 6, 5 says, there were those in Israel who invented for themselves instruments of music like David. God declared how he despised the temple music and song because of their hypocrisy. Such music is not pleasing to God when the heart is far from him. He will judge such, and that's Amos 8, 10. So when music does not actually edify the kingdom of God, God judges that music. You have to understand that. Praise God, praise God. I told you this would be a teaching video, so so those that really want to learn, stay on here. Those that don't, and you want some hooping and shotting, go somewhere else. God bless you. All right, Daniel 3 says, Music was used to influence all in Babylon to fall down and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's image. So they even did this in King Nebuchadnezzar's day. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Here we see a satanic use of music in worship to make man worship men as God. Music and worship cannot be separated, whether directed to the true God or false gods of men. Now we're talking about in Leviticus, Leviticus 2 Kings 23.10. History records that the worship of Molech, now that was the sacrifice of um, the babies, by the Canaanites wars of the vilest and bassest sort. In the sacrificing of their children, the priests would beat the drums to drown out the cries of the children being offered to the fire in Moloch. So now a lot of people, now you know why they play drums. You understand what I'm saying? It's to drown out the noise of the children that were being offered. So that's why I rock, if you notice how they always play in the drums and they go into a high and then people start, you know, like moving their body like crazy. Y'all starting to get the drift right here. So let me continue. It says also, their idolatry festivities music played an important part as the priest would ascend the steps of the altar he would gradually divest himself of his clothing at the given signal the people would join him in all kind of vile orgies so wait a minute this is back in old testament times do you know the priests and all of them they used to actually play and have people play music that would help them come out their clothes don't y'all see that all we did was come back around in a circle what's happening People half naked, even in church. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And they would have orgies, even with the priests. Y'all understand what's happening here? All right, praise God. The music was satanically inspired to produce these results. That's why I'm doing these videos. I want you to understand I'm not against people, I'm against what they are doing and they're inducing. Rap music, hip hop, so to speak, back in the day used to be about a positive message. Now it's all about killing, having big booty, having money. When did they start showing all their money? And then they wonder why they're getting robbed. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let me continue, all right? Uh, it was a reason that God did not allow steps to his altar, Israel, so that the nakedness would not be seen. Mark 6, 23 says, Herod had the head of John the Baptist taken off because of the sensuous dancing of his daughter. Now, everybody remembers that when John the Baptist had, was beheaded. It was because her daughter, the queen, okay, the whole story is, John the Baptist had told Her King Herod that it was wrong for him to actually marry that his, his brother's wife. His brother had died. So she got mad. 
And so she had a plan. And so what she did, she told her daughter to dance. So the daughter started dancing. And the poor king, I'm going to call him poor king because he never saw it coming. He was so endowed by her sensuous dancing. He said, anything you want, anything you want, half the kingdom. And the mother had told her, ask for the head of John the Baptist. And if you read in scripture, he was very wroth with that. He was like, Lord, what have I done? And so he had to deliver. So John the Baptist was behaved because of the same thing I'm talking about. Sensuous dancing. Elements that actually affect the mind, affect your spirit. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. You know who does that a lot? And I'm just, I'm telling the truth, Beyonce. If you look at the hand movements, if you look at the body movements, they're enticing you. And that's why y'all think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Let me continue. Revelations 8, 22, 23 says, Babylon is characterized by musician in the last days. Hold on. So God knew that in the last days, music would be the top influence. And isn't it, come on somebody, hallelujah, the music industry. But now here's the deal. Also the gospel music. You guys, it's not the same anymore. And I'm not being hateful or bashing people. The gospel music is sensual too. It makes you want to skip a beat. And I am guilty of it too. When Kirk Franklin came out, everybody was like, oh, he's good. Shackles off my feet so I can dance, right? Not understanding that it was the first pinnacle that would lead to now what's what's called gospel music, but really it's not. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. There's no anointing. Oh, y'all know it's true. Let me continue. God says that in Babylon's music to cease, Babylon is significant of religious confusion. So the whole thing with gospel music right now, it is called a religious confusion to confuse you from worshiping God and just actually have lay dormant like, okay, it sounds good. As long as it sounds good, I, I can be it. No, no, no. What's happening is that every time you listen to something that is not of God, it is tainting your spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thus, through these scriptures, we can plainly see that music is an instrument that can be used for evil as well as good. Just as a hammer through neither good or evil of itself may be used to build or destroy. So the laws of music which were created by God for good may be corrupted to produce ungodly music, listen to this, that would destroy those who listen to it. That's the whole thing of Satan when our kids right now. You guys, they want to destroy our, our youth. And you know how they say our youth is our future? Well, if they destroy the youth, they destroy the future, right? Hallelujah. And you can't tell these kids anything. As a matter of fact, how many people, and when I was in California, um, I think it was like seven or eight people got killed. They walked in front of a train. They had that stuff in their ear. They had, you know, they had the little um, ear earplugs in their ear. They couldn't even hear the train, you guys. They got killed. So you understand how this is affecting people for real? Praise God. Let me continue. Though originally an instrument of God, mu music has become one of Satan's most powerful tools. Do you understand that? Satan, his powerful tool, the same thing that he was worshiping God with, now he's using to destroy us. And I say us, come on somebody, hallelujah. So let me continue. It is different styles that he's forming, generations, cultures, and nations astray. That, that's just leading people astray. Whether they be savage or sophisticated, Satan has used the many styles of music to motivate mankind to do evil and to tie the heart's affection to all that is not of God. So he's using the music to take us away from God. Come on, somebody. And, and to be honest with you, everybody like music, everybody like to dance. Y'all know it's the truth. Okay, let me continue. He has used primitive, primitive jungle music to keep man bound by sensuality and demonic situations. He used military march music to inspire men to slay each other on a mass of the battlefield. Now, hold on. Don't you know the military march style? That's what they're using in rap. I had to Google all this stuff. I had to go through books. I had to find all this stuff. Do you understand? It's called a military march style. So that's what these rappers are doing to each other. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. He's inducing it so that they can kill each other. Y'all better listen to me. Praise God. Let me continue. He also has used the sophisticated classical music to get men to worship music as an end in itself. Some people are so endowed with music, they can't go to sleep. Whether it be jazz, whether it be um, folk music, it doesn't matter. Folk music. All right, let me continue. In modern Western civilization, Satan has implemented various styles of music in affecting the hearts and the minds of men. So it doesn't only affect the way you think, 
It affects your heart. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let me continue. The contemporary music scene is highly complex and constantly changing. To thoroughly evaluate, it would be a gigantic test. Therefore, one modern form is called rock music, has been chosen out of all of them to demonstrate Satan's powerful use of music. All right, so let's talk about rock music. Rock music, undoubtedly, one of the greatest challenges to the believer in the church today is called the so-called rock music. Church history has shown that there have been various crises over music in the church, and it's called rock music. It's just not one of these other cries. Now, both secular and religious actually took its place in the world about the years of 1960 to 65. So that's when rock, rock music was really, really banging, right? It has been on the increase since. The student is referred to for books and dealing with information about and the analysis of that kind of music. Now, rock music is a careful, listen, and prayerful consideration. Should be done by any believer who personally desires a high standard of music in the church. Now, this is one of Satan's master weapons, listen to this, to corrupt the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, he's actually on a mission to destroy the gospel of Jesus Christ through music. And how you know, and I just have to go here, I'm not bashing anybody. There is no way that Tasha Cobb should have done a song with Nicki Minaj. Nicki, Nicki Minaj still cussing, still fussing. Come on, somebody, we're talking about spirits. We're not talking about the person. Come on, somebody. I'm not condemning that lady. I don't, I'm not God, but I'm just saying, if we're going to do something in a decent manner, check out what you're doing first. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Kanye West and Kirk Franklin. I don't know if you've noticed, Kirk Franklin have not been the same. Something rubbed off a spirit. You cannot dwell with evil and it not touch you. That's all I'm saying. I'm not bashing anybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me continue. The devil motto has always been, if you cannot beat them, join them. Isn't he doing that? And when I put it on Facebook and I say, what well, does say the Lord? Some people came up, oh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing if Nikki would have changed. It's a good thing if she would have got saved. Did she? Nah. It was a good thing if Kanye West would have I've given my life to Lord. Don't y'all see it's publicity and it's about money? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me continue. Rock music seems to fall in two basic categories. Secular rock, which is entirely the product of godless, anti-Christian world and Christian rock. A mixture of the music of the rock world and Christian or ethical lyrics is used in a variety of range. Now, the heaviest kind of belonging is to the world of drugs. So don't you know that some of this music, in, it actually incites drugs. Now, I'm not a big fan of all this other stuff, but in order to do this research, I had to listen to some music. So, and I couldn't listen to it long, by the way. Remember uh, Future, he was a Percocet, Percocet, Percocet. Now you got people ODing on Percocet. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Then you have people like 6 9 uh, Forget school, F school, and, and I just want to get high. If you really look at it, a lot of rappers are talking about X pills. So now these kids think it's good. I'm going to take an X pill. I'm going to take some mollies. Do you understand that it's a medium to talk to us as well and to divert us from God? Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Let me continue. This is a lot of information, by the way. Not only that, the world rock music is psychedelic. So it's a psychedelic. It fills with your psyche. Your mind. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It is a word generally applied. Now, guess what it means? Guess what rock music means backwards and also in a form? It means acid rock. That means, guess what? Acid is powerful, huh? That means it's going to take you out. Praise God. Praise God. Let me continue. Christian rock also varies in its range. It is known under the title as gospel rock, Jesus rock, or Christian rock because of the vastness of such an area of music with the content of it important facts associated with it's secular. So most rock is secular, but they'll say it's Christian rock. Come on, somebody. Hill song. Come on, somebody. I'm not even going to go there with them because sometimes they go to bars and drink out openly, but they come and say music. And then what you don't understand, and again, okay, let's say a pastor's in a church. Whatever anointing that that pastor, that leader is working with, it trickles down to the congregation. Let me put it this way. If ever you see a congregation and a lot of people are married and flirting, you need to check your pastor because I promise you he's doing the same thing. So whatever anointing that the leader has, the church has, the leadership, it drinkles down to the church. If you have a, a, a lot of uh, foolish liars, guess what? They're all lying. Look at that pastor. If they fornicate, 
Look at that pastor. If they commit adultery, look at that pastor. That's why God is cleansing his churches in these days. Because to be honest with you, they are tainted and possessed. You're saying a Christian cannot be possessed. Yes, they can, my friend. Hallelujah. Let me continue. Rock music is also associated with evil descriptions. The essentials of rock are drums, lead rhythm, and bass guitar, sometimes a brass section and jarring beats. The very essence of rock, it's beat, romantic, and pounding. Now think about it. When it's pounding, it's pounding your heart, right? So it excites you. When a person can differentiate between melody, harmony, and the rhythm of basic ingredients of music, it's called rock music. But rock music is overriding the beat and fast rhythm. Hold on. And the emphasis is the beat of the melody. Proper music reveals the melody. The offbeat apply appealing to the rhythms of the human body. So when rock music is actually doing it with the with the drums and it's going fast and everything, your body, that's why they start shaking their head and they start, I'm not gonna do all that, maybe have a headache. But y'all know they they move very fast when it's called rock music. So I'm going somewhere with this. Hold on. Praise God, praise God. So I want to talk about how the rock music corrupts the gospel of Christ. It is about this final area of the evangelicals, I'm sorry, are confused. Most of the so-called Christian rock, Jesus Christ, groups are religious lyrics. However, many of them are anti-scripture. So meaning that they'll be talking about God, but it's not even scripture. Just like if they give, you know, like the Passion of Christ and a lot of movies that have actually been out there. If you really look at it and test it towards scripture, it's not even scripture. They just threw some stuff in it and, and thought that we would be excited, and most of us was, because guess what? Number one in the box office, Passion of Christ. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Let me continue. Do you also know that such groups who use these style of music hope that the Holy Spirit will move in it, not realizing, I need y'all listen to me, that evil spirits generally moves with this style. So come on, somebody, hallelujah. So that's what I'm saying. Hold on. There's so much information, you guys. Let me talk about the power and elevation of the music. Now, when music, when it hits your emotion, right? So music is vitally connected to its power to the emotion. According to Fear Kerr, in speaking of the power of music, he says that a music is an expression of human emotions. The basic law of human nature is that the emotions seek expression. God has provided two normal channels for this, rhythm, physical movement, and vocal sound. All emotions include either pleasure or pain. Y'all notice that? Either it's to the extreme. Either you feel a very good pleasure or you feel pain, like blues. Isn't that sad? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Sorrow may be, hold on, that's so much stuff written down, y'all just don't know. Sorrow expressed by people's bending over in pain or groaning. Anchor or temper often expresses itself in shouting wildly at someone or something. Rock music, right? Praise God, praise God. Now, the evaluation of music is this. It's a general understanding of what reality is and is it good or bad. Now, the important role in evaluating music is should it be in the house of the Lord of a believer? Come on, somebody, I'll leave you. Should you be listening to it? And you all know, because guess what? When you have the Spirit of God, you have a spirit of conviction. And the Holy Spirit will tell you, uh, you probably shouldn't be listening to this. And let's be honest, some of us, back in the day, thank you, Lord, that's a good one. When we used to listen to love music, Luther Vandross, um, come on, somebody, who else? Um, Marvin Gaye, um, um, all the reasons, you know, earth, wind, and fire. They call them baby making music. Come on, somebody. Else. You remember. Or if you don't remember, your mama remember. Your daddy remember. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. What happened? It did get you in a sensual. So music gets you in a sensual, don't a sensuality to where you want to make love. Especially, oh, let's talk about that. Praise God. That's a good one, God. When you go, used to go to clubs. They have it all good, huh? The number one thing is music. And guess what? If they play the right type of music, you'll be on the dance floor trying to make love to somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. How many people have? But you call it slow dance and all whatever. And then they make the right atmosphere, give you a couple of drinks. Is somebody listening to me for real? Now, I used to go out and do the same thing, so I'm not knocking nobody. But at that time, I didn't know God. So guess what? 
now understand they had all the elements on it because music is a form of emotions, right? So if I play some slow music and I get some alcohol in, I can make them do almost anything on that dance floor or go home and want to do it, meet somebody. How many times you've been in a club and you were drinking and the music was right and everybody was right and you was dressed fine and you were smelling fine, y'all know what I'm talking about, and you took somebody home and boy, I'm talking about you had a good time, if you could remember. <laughs> the next day you woke up, you was like, and they just singing in the shower, you like, and then they didn't look as good as they did that night before. Oh, come on, somebody, I'm going somewhere with this. So do you understand what music does? The power of music is in, it's, it's emotional. And, and, and it, this, is, this is what they do. They get it in the melody, the harmony, and the rhythm. Because your body moves off of frequencies. That's why you could hear. That's why hearing is frequency. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Or oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. I'm just being real with you. So basically, funeral music. Notice it's in the minor key. Heathen music is, is often in another key. It's in C, E, and G. The major chord usually to express joy and gladness and exaggeration, that's also in C, G, and E. Understand what's happening. The symphonies of the music can produce anything that it wants to. You know what Jimi Hendrix said? Jimi Hendrix said, I can make a person do anything through my music. That's exactly what's happening. That's exactly. And so what I'm saying is that rap, hip hop, they want to kill our children. They want to destroy the minds of our children. They teach our children to hate the adults, to hate rules, to hate regulations, to hate school. Listen to it. Listen to a couple of songs. They teach them, okay, do drugs. It's okay to do drugs. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's so much information. Okay, so let's talk about where did music come from. Music originated in the heart of a genuine believer out of a Christian principles. All right, here's the deal. On a, pos on a positive side note, we can find that God was the great originator of all things. So God really created worship. We were made to worship God. That's where music came from. But it wasn't, it, you know, he was the choir director. So we were worshiping God day and night. The angels worship God day and night. That's where music originally came from. But when Satan got kicked out of heaven, that's when he said, guess what? I'm going to use these same gifts and pervert everything. And now we have a pervertness. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So the, so here's the thing. What happens? Okay. I wish y'all could see this, but y'all can't. I have it written where well, you have a spirit. So the melanie dominates your spirit, the spiritual drive, and it's a rise and a fall. Now, let me tell you what it does. It causes tension, unfulfillment, frustration, passion, depression, and despair. Now, your soul, let me tell you what harmony does. Harmony is, supports the melody. Now, that's your so uh, philosophical drive. Now, this is your conscience. It causes confusion, rebellion, pride. So, wait a minute. If you get the wrong harmony, It'll cause rebellion. It'll cause confusion. It'll cause somebody wanting to kill. Hold on. Your body. Your body is subject to the rhythm of everything. Now, what it does is, that's the drive. That's the physical drive. The rhythm is repetition. You know, when you keep playing something, repetition. Now, this is where your sensuality and the distraction. So, all of this is your spirit, soul, and body. So, believe it or not, you get the right melody. The right chord the right rhythm, the right harmony, and you can make somebody do anything they want you to do. You want to, they, you know. So my God, my God, my God, I got so much information and it's so much, just so much. So basically, I'm, I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna start part two tomorrow. What I'm saying is that, thank you Lord, hallelujah to his name. The tabernacle of Moses and David, they learned to keep it pure. They wanted the music to be pure so there would be a pure worship. Now Satan has diverted everything. Parents, you have to you have to take them earphones out your children's ear and listen to what they're listening to. Because to be honest with you, everybody's saying, okay, the kids are this or the kids are that. Parents, you gotta start monitoring what they see, what they watch, what they hear, what they listen to. Because notice this, and I want y'all to do this. 
notice how, take it away for about a week. And notice how your children will go back into order. And then give it back to them for about a week. And notice how the decline of listening. Notice the rebellion. Notice the frustration. Notice the anger. And notice the rage. Church, we have to address this. Because to be honest with you, what y'all do in church, most leaders, oh, we'll let them listen to that music. Anything for them to come in. That was never supposed to be in the house of God. In the house of God was supposed to be our, 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 our order of worship, which is holiness. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So now we have people killing, robbing, stealing. And the music industry is the biggest, the biggest one of all. The biggest rebellious thing that's just taking our kids and taking their mind and waxing them. How do we pray against that? We ask the Lord, Lord, this is your house. I'm not going to have no lewd music up in here. I'm not going to have no rap music up in here that's talking about killing, stealing, robbing, lying. Parents, you got you to gotta do your part. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And I know you can't stop them all the time, but in your house, we're going to serve the Lord. In this house, we're going to serve the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that's what's going on. And even in gospel music, like I said, I'm not trying to bash anybody. Listen with your spirit. If you don't feel your spirit pick up, if you start feeling things that is not of God, that's not gospel music. It's music, but it ain't gospel music. So I want you to understand what they're doing. They're manipulating our children by music. Come on, somebody. They're manipulating us by music. They have all kind of Christian gospel coming in all of a sudden. And it's not even of God. And if you really listen to it, you, you'll hear the harmony, the sensuality. You'll hear the rebellion of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So I pray that you understand what I'm saying. Because this is going to be our victory in spiritual warfare. The only way we can really come against Satan is to know what he's doing and how he's doing it. And that's why I had to break all this stuff down. I know it wasn't a hooping, hollering video to where, oh, possibly doing this and that. No, in these last days, in order to be Satan, we got to know who he is and how he operates. And his biggest thing is in the music business. Hallelujah. And the crazy part, here's what they do. After they make them famous, they kill them. Oh, come on, somebody. And then they get money behind them. Y'all hear what I'm saying, huh? This stuff is real. It's not funny. It's not funny at all. It's sickening. So that's the information I have for you tonight. I pray that you tag and share. And if you have any questions, let me know, you know. Um, well, God bless you. And it, it's, it's sad. It's sad. I mean, when you really think about what's going on, this is, this is not good. It's not good at all. So this is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Roll out soldiers, for that is who you are. God bless.